Okay, everybody, welcome along to the Q&A stage at Collision. Thanks so much for dropping by. We have some uh, great sessions lined up for the day, so keep an eye on the app for the most up-to-date times and who's dropping by uh, throughout the day here on the final day of Collision. But to kick things off, we are joined by serial entrepreneur Christopher Jones and by actor Damon Waynes Jr. Yeah, uh, the way this will work, if you guys have a question, just give me a shout, way, uh, raise your hand, I'll move amongst you with the mic, and um, maybe step forward, I'll be down here and uh, the guys have promised to spare a couple of minutes to answer as many questions as they can. But might start off, Chris. What? <laughs> serial? <laughs> serial entrepreneur? Yeah, serial. Oh, it's like yeah. Serial. It. He only does with it first an thing in the morning. With an <laughs> S, not a C. <laughs> okay. Anybody got a question to kick things off? And if not, I might ask you, Chris, you were speaking just uh, a short time ago on Centre Stage and you were talking about the importance of not falling in love too much with your ID and yeah. keeping a, maybe a critical collaboration going. I want to talk a little bit about that and how important it is to focus on the problem as well as the dream. Yep. You just want me to reflect on it real yeah, quick? Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, I think here's the reality. You know, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've been an entrepreneur for, for almost 20 years. I've, I've had mostly successes, uh, some failures as well. Uh, you know, being a successful entrepreneur is, is tough. Um, and so I like to kind of have conversations about it, like super objective and super direct. Like the odds are against us to win, right? So one of the things I know that happens a lot with entrepreneurs is you become so in love with your idea that you, know, you don't challenge yourself to really think through the economics, the, the, the market size, um, and, and a lot of the other things that if you think through properly and you hold yourself accountable to will increase the likelihood that you succeed. So, I mean, that sounds kind of nerdy, but in truth, one of the reasons that I succeed a lot more than I fail is because I've become obsessed with how to build, how to become a successful entrepreneur. And so, uh, yeah, this was a rare, uh, you know, over the last eight years, I've probably sat through 200 ideas, you know, that someone else had and they approached me. But when Damon and I, oh, hello now, when Damon and I connected, it was, it was a lot different than the typical, like, like, I gotta give him some really bad advice here. The idea, the idea is bad, it was not like that. His, his original idea for a special guest app uh, is, was a super big idea and you know, here we are almost two years later. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, the, the beauty is that even before uh, I found out about his kind of idea when it comes to creating apps, which is don't fall in love with your idea too much, I was already ready to make adjustments when I came forward with, with my idea. When I came with my idea to him, I was already like, help me make this better or help me make this uh, doable, you know? Uh, and, and there were a lot of hurdles, um, but we, you know, in a very quick time, we really figured it out. And he had a lot of people that kind of came in and helped us form it and make it the best thing that it can be. Um, well, right now, there's still plenty of time to improve, but uh, I think we, we both kind of uh, were in sync mentally. So we both knew, like, this is a great idea, and, but we, we have to improve it. Okay, yeah. Okay. so if you do have questions, yeah, uh, I'm gonna kick off with Sean here. Yes, I just have a question of, as you're getting this started, how much do you let the uh, legal matters kind of uh, keep you back? You know, you, you book somebody and the guy totally sucks and somebody's gonna come back on you because right. I used your venue right. to book him. Uh, so, great question. This is another golden nugget for those of you that want to be a successful entrepreneur versus the 95% that are unsuccessful. Don't worry about that shit. Um, you know, at the end of the day, don't worry about your freaking intellectual property and sharing your idea. The winners are the ones who execute every time. I've been in a room full of 200 of the world's top entrepreneurs and there's one thing we all had in common. We don't worry about that shit. We execute the idea. That said, I was at an event, a uh, Tiger Global Management Conference a bunch of years ago. I love sharing this story. And I was one of the speakers, and uh, Malcolm Gladwell was our keynote. Malcolm Gladwell looked out at all the entrepreneurs and he said, um, society sort of has entrepreneurship wrong, right and wrong. He said what they have right is that successful, underlying successful entrepreneurs are social risk takers. 
someone tells us we can't do anything, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. But successful entrepreneurs are operationally risk averse. In other words, we care deeply about the question you just asked, but we would never not take the first step towards the much bigger goal of solving a problem because of some you know, potential liability that might come up later. That said, you know, Damon and I actually care deeply about the quality of the talent on our platform. And is there gonna be a bad egg that comes in on, from time to time? Hell yeah. But it's not gonna stop us from our bigger goal, right? Yeah, I agree. And, and that's why we have uh, you know, parts in place within the app. You know, we have a rating system. Uh, we have uh, you know, where you can comment and talk about this person. So if they are a bad egg, odds are they're not going to be revisited. Um, so that kind of, that, that really helps. It kind of, you know, self-regulates. Yeah. Okay. Just by the good. way, that was a very good question, sir. I very good. Yeah. Can we have a round of applause for the question? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Fantastic question. Top ten. Okay. Top ten. The pressure's on, Jessica. Oh, thanks. That helps. Are you ready, Jess? Um, I, I think so. Okay. Um, so I am a journalist from Canada, and as you may know, Canada is a pretty thriving artistic Absolutely. scene. Where? Where at? Uh, so I was living in Montreal. Oh, Montreal I was just there for four months. Oh, were you? Yeah. Why didn't you call me? It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. I did. Um, it's been a while. Okay, well, next time, I'm in Toronto now, so, <laughs> uh, which brings me to my actual question. Uh, are there any plans to bring the app to Canada? Uh, yeah, definitely. That, that's the, the ultimate goal is to, is to bring it you know, to Canada, to South America, worldwide. Okay. Um, we ultimately want to be synonymous with entertainment, with live entertainment. So when you think, how do I book you know, this live entertainer, you think special guest first. So, yes. Thank you. Okay. The global launch happened here. Christian. Yeah, uh, my name is Christian O from Washington, D.C. You had mentioned earlier that with special guests that you're trying to help alleviate the management or the managers that do manage a lot of these artists. I am a manager of probably uh, a good handful of minority and Asian American artists. Right. Right. So how would this help me as a manager in regards to the artists that I manage? So in a lot of ways, number one, uh, we're an end-to-end -end solution. So if you're looking at new talent, they're probably reaching out to you through email. You guys are going back and forth. They, the first introduction might look like this. Hey, um, I, here's the type of you know, performer I am. It may or may not include enough information. As an end-to-end -end solution, everything resides within the app, so it makes it easier for a manager like yourself to discover talent and to also manage your talent. The second piece is we're working directly with venues. So, Picture being able to partner with us and help you take your artists out on tour by plugging them in to venues that we're working with throughout the country. That second piece is probably the most attractive to you because as a manager, some of the stuff that we solve with tech, you're just putting in the work for them. You know, you're, you're the hustle uh, that, that in some cases confuses the, the traditional performer. So I really think that we could work with you uh, and we could collaborate on how we could get your artists booked more frequently. So, one other question, follow-up. Follow-up question, is there, is there ability to put an EPK, an electronic press kit, within the, within the app? So, do you mean as like an attachment or...? Attach yeah, as an attachment or something so that when the venues get the... When the venues get my artists, they're like, oh, I want to, I want to learn more, mm. and then we have a digital press kit that they can access or, or get to. So, we have our own sort of digital press kit uh, if you will, right? It's like, so you could come into the app. Uh, two things real quick. For talent, the app is free. They get 100% of their booking fee. We're totally turning upside down, no offense, but we're, we're turning upside down the way that management typically works. Um, but the, the performer could come in, upload YouTube videos, connect all their social profiles, uh, add pictures, you know, have their biography. So that's kind of our digital sort of portfolio. But in, in fairness, I'd love to, to chat with you and, and follow up the conversation. Okay, time for a couple more questions. Laura. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Laura Simpson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Side Door. Oh. Uh, we basically do this in Canada. Oh, awesome. So, uh, 
Bad news for Jessica. We've been oh, Jess. I've been tr I've tr no, no, no. I've tried your app and, and working it out, and I love that this is happening, and I actually just really want to connect with you. Oh, because awesome. Because we're coming from the same place. We're trying to protect the rights and the interests of artists. My question to you is, so we're approaching it more of a secondary and tertiary markets uh, to connect the dots for off days, for fill dates for, for artists, and we're using alternative spaces, so houses, cafes, bookstores. So there might be some synergy there. I just wanted to put that out. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. What is it called? Side door? Yeah. Nice. Great. Ryan, come on up. Hey, hey, uh, my name's Ryan. I'm from Canada as well. Um, What's oh, everybody from Canada over here? <laughs> <laughs> Represent. You mentioned not falling in love with your ideas, but I feel like lots of my drive and passion comes from like falling in love and obsessed with my own ideas. So how do you maintain that balance of being a dreamer and a realist at the same time? Dude, it's that's. Uh, I, I try to. I try to remove the. Uh, do, I am. I'm, I don't know if I'm as passionate as you, but I wear passion on my sleeve. My whole life is based on the things that I care most about. But I also like to win, and I like to succeed. So I try to, you know, try to strip it out when I'm making business decisions. And so, um, honestly, it's about identifying the specific skills that successful entrepreneurs have, and becoming obsessed with building those skills individually as an entrepreneur. Then you bring the passion in, and the game is over. Because you will outwork anyone. You will. Uh, not only be able to wake up in the morning because you're passionate, but you'll actually be able to see the progress you're making towards your end goal, right? Which is building a successful company. Yeah. So it's not easy, but honestly, my I would really encourage you to just it, passion's great. Uh, it's, it's it's required, but you know, learning the skills uh, is as as or more important if you want to be super successful. Yeah. To piggyback on that, I I think that you know his perspective kind of comes with how long he's been doing it, you know, trial and error. So you learn how to, you know, uh, reserve your passion. But for people that are just starting, like me, like you, um, I think it's important to, to keep your passion, but train your ear to hear good ideas or better ones and to adjust, you know. So, so never, never feel like your, your idea is too good to... Uh, to, to not be adjusted. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Jason, you're up. Hello. Uh, first off, I love the Green Day shirt. I'm a big fan. <laughs> My question to you is, how do you stand out from the crowd when you're just starting out? You know, before you have street cred, before you have any kind of reputation, uh, how do you stand out in a room of 20,000 other entrepreneurs who may or may not be, uh, be looking for the same clients as you? How do you get your voice heard? So you just did it. You grab the microphone. Um, I think you have to be relentless. I think you have to be a good storyteller. I think you have to be incredibly confident. Um, and I, th I think you, you have to go into it. Like when Damon and I, he had never done like a venture capital round. And we did a successful VC round last year. And it was the first time that Damon had ever done that. He and I went together to the Silicon Valley and we went into the meetings. And I said to him, I said, expect 99 plus percent knows, no matter how good the meeting goes, right? Yep. And so you, I go into it with that attitude um, that I'm probably going to hear no, but I'm still going to become a good storyteller. And, and to get to the question that was just asked, be really passionate in, in the belief of whatever it is that I'm doing and pursuing. And I'm just going to be relentless. Yeah. And right? Yeah, relentlessness, um, being interesting helps, you know? To create relationships, so even if they do say no, you'll be able to revisit. Um, so it's 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 wanting to uh, make that lasting impression, you know, and make sure that lasting impression is a good one. You know, you don't want to spill a drink on somebody important, unless it's really funny. <laughs> then, okay, on that lasting impression, we're out of time. Unfortunately, I know there are more questions, so apologies. But uh, we are back in 20 minutes' time with Brad Smith, president of Microsoft. Thank you all for uh, dropping by. We're here all day at the Q and A stage. So keep an eye on the app. Chris and Damon, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate Thank it, you, guys. Man. A round of applause.